Hey, well, what's up? Hello, and welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast, which is a podcast brought to you by CityLine Church. Um, we say all the time, it's the perfect place for imperfect people. Uh, it's a church that's all about helping people discover and follow Jesus. And so we're so thankful that you are tuning in this week to continue to track along in great discussions. Uh, it is Wednesday, everybody, and we are back with episode two. 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 Episode two. Two. Um, I think it's so how yeah, you say got, it. Yeah, got fast. one under the belt. Two. There you go. Fancy. Fancy. Another language. Pinky's out. Pinky's out. Bilingual. Trilingual. Trilingual. Multicultural. <laughs> community yeah. of faith and we haven't even this talked about it. tongues on the podcast yet oh, okay well anyway so season two season two season two but this is <laughs> but, but this is episode two yes okay so guys cool. check check it out uh it's wednesday and do you know what we say on wednesday is hump day i wasn't going there <laughs> man but I, I mean you could say that i, I was just thinking, i mean i'm not mad at you for saying happy that. wednesday ha happy happy wednesday Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Nobody's happy Wednesday ever said you. that to me. Nobody's ever said that to you? No. Happy Wednesday? No. You know, like you're in the middle of the week, you're just like, happy Wednesday. Nah. I think people have said like, happy Monday to attempt to like force you to believe that Monday was actually a day you enjoyed. But we, other than that, yeah, Wednesday is Remember, never really... Remember we had a sermon years ago, uh -huh. have better Mondays? Better Mondays. And since then, I've tried to have better Mondays. Yeah, that's but good. nobody's ever told me happy but, but Wednesday. Generally speaking, we Sabbath on Mondays too, so yeah. you know, sure, we're trying sure. to... Yeah. But there, there, well, maybe we need to start something new called Exciting Wednesday. Exciting Wednesday. Yo. Happy Wednesday. Ha Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Nah, but for real, what's crazy, it's Wednesday, and okay. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's also May. M May 1st. It's gonna be May. What? May is here. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, we're in May. May. All right. Hey. I Bars. mean, so <laughs> I say all that to say, Bars. not to scare anybody, but uh, we're, we're kind of getting halfway through yeah. 2024. Man, that's, that's crazy wild, business, dude. bro. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm yeah. good. Like, oh, we're here for I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm summer's right. coming, right? 2024 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but we're here for it right like summer's coming yeah uh, we're, we're, we're having a blast um if you're just tuning in right now you're hanging out with uh pastor josh pastor troy and me pastor jack and we're just kind of chilling hanging out uh and want to talk through a few things today i think yeah. we want to start it off with um hey just a weekly check-in how you guys feeling um what's going on in life like how's the how's the last week been i mean it was a week ago since we dropped the first episode Shmurda. now here we are with episode two mm -hmm. um yeah, how you guys feeling? What, what's what's going on in life? Yeah, life's good. Um, you know, uh, had a baby shower a little while ago. Got another baby on the mm -hmm. way, number three. Yeah, uh, it's been cool. Been doing a lot of painting around the house. You know, yeah, uh, the nesting is strong with this one. Getting ready. Uh, but you know, gotta say, you know, uh, gotta thank God. Today does seem kind of odd. Yeah, no barking from the dog, no smog. No smog. And Mama cooked the breakfast. It was a good breakfast too. With no hog, <laughs> no hog, no yeah, hog. It was yeah. good. So it's been good. Today it's was good. a good day. Yeah, today, good. Yeah, it was a good day. It's been a good week. Um, you know, uh, just kind of sitting in the reality of some 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 tense things and hard things in ministry. Sure. Uh, just coming sure. alongside people and and trying to help in, in the best way we can. Yeah. Not to fix or solve anything, but just to sit with them and and give you know wisdom and direction when needed. Uh, yeah. Man. But also being reminded that. Uh, that's only sustainable if I actually take the time to, to sit and be with God myself. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a healthy rhythm that, you know, I've been working to establish over the years. And I'm grateful that that is the reality that I live into now. It's good, man. Um, because it makes even in hard seasons, you can still have good days. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. No, thank dope. you for sharing that. That's, that's dope. dope. Yeah, I've been good. I mean, yeah. been uh, in just kind of random news, just exciting things because I feel like normal people's stuff's fun. I bought a microwave. Yeah, kind of, you know, you know, and I think this is kind of. It seems as though this is like a small thing, but it's actually a huge, thing, huge yeah. thing in the household. I'm pretty sure know? it's a next level microwave. It really, too, it, it's yeah, not yeah, it's like, like a smart microwave. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna <laughs> it's, be a basic it's, one. It's hooked up to Alexa or Google. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, please. Jo jo for Joshua, one minute. Has, no, everything he has can be connected like to his phone. Like, yeah. Joshua has smart house or some sort of remote control yeah, or something like that. You know? Just get you know, up and do it. I'll you got a honest, popcorn button on the remote th control. This and you're one, automatic. this one, I was walking up the aisles at Target, and the spirit of the Lord said, "Pick this one." So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Just, I just felt, you know, just the wind of God. Yeah. Just kind of Today we're talking about drink. over spiritualizing. You know how exactly. many people? You know how many people? <laughs> exactly. You know how many people are gonna go to Target <laughs> and come home and say the spirit of the Lord told me to get it? Yeah, exactly. Just like. Even when I bought shoes a couple weeks ago, when Pastor Jack talked about those old me Air Force Ones that you got on right now. Yeah, my Camille. <laughs> the old me Air Force Ones. Man, one. I do. It, it was said, a I'm not ready okay, to let these right. go. You know, I'm just going to get it out of the way because the camera's right here. They clowning them. There yeah, they are. There they are. Those, are. Those, are he, those are the ones. What did you say earlier? You said it was, you never seen a pair of I never Forces seen that like was flat. Flat bottom <laughs> shoes. I'm That's like, why, you, 
wore <laughs> every ounce of tread off those that's shoes. That's why yeah, Nelly bro. and the St. Lunatics said, give me two per. That's what I'm saying. Because he know, ain't stomping the nose. You got you know, you to rock one, stock one. <laughs> I'm like, those look like backyard shoes at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, those, <laughs> you know bro, what's crazy? Looking like a backyard again. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm gonna actually tell you how my week was, but really quick. What's yeah. crazy about these forces? Like, if you look on the side, y'all yeah. can't see it, but it's like it looks gray. <laughs> well, here's the deal. I think it's like <laughs> I think the podcast is already on another level. One. Because Josh is very flexible and yeah, he's able, able to show us the shoes. Yeah, I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah, Thank I'm you. like, wow. You I'll know. pop a hip doing that. But uh, <laughs> we went from talking about highs and lows to immediately. That's a low. It's <laughs> a real low. It's <laughs> a real low. <laughs> said, I never got talking about soul care. Yes, 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 yes. We're talking about soul care. That's an all time low. That's soul care. <laughs> That's a that's a whole other oh level of so hey, care. We're gonna have to come back to this conversation. We will, we will, we'll we will. See what the office is like. Yeah, but I bet I did buy microwave. You think those simple things are nice for me? I've been kind of not about the microwave thing for a little bit. Been trying to just work with the you know the the air fryer sort of Touching thing. So yeah, you good. know, it's, but it does make things kind of nice though. Quick, quick is you know yeah. ma- makes makes life a little bit easier. And more serious note, super excited this week. Been looking forward to. Um, our worship arts team is getting together and we're doing a one day retreat. Nice. Yeah. So our whole worship arts team is made up of not just people who are on stage and I don't know if anybody listening to the podcast realizes For sure. this, but um, the entirety of our worship arts team is a big team. We got yep. people who serve in broadcast and producing and cameras and audio and lighting mm. and mm. creatives and the whole nine yards. And we got that not just here on Sunday mornings, but over in our youth team as well. And right. so we're coming together for a big one day retreat. Super pumped about it. We got guest speakers and worship leaders coming in to just invest in love on our team uh, who just gives out time and time and again um, you know one of our values and or one of our core movements in our community is leading well and we want to equip people with resources it takes to be able to lead well and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah it's super super exciting it's I'm beautiful. so grateful for um, a house that values investing in people mm-hmm. um, and so we're going to be all throughout this campus, different rooms, breakout sessions, uh, talking about conversations and worship. Yeah. This guy's gonna be bringing the house, you know. Uh, you know, you know a, got a few the words lo- to share. Lo- love words to share, <laughs> <laughs> in encouraging our team, um, who just gives out so so faithfully. Small yeah. plug, love our worship arts team. Yeah, shout out Friday worship arts team. Hey. Shout out all our teams. Yeah. All yeah. of our teams. Big facts. All of our big, serve big teams, facts. man. Yeah. Well, this church doesn't do anything without our serve team. Yeah. Without planning center. You know accept- I mean? Oh, without our serve team. But yeah, yeah, without planning center request being accepted. <laughs> yeah. That but, being said, yes. put your blackout out. dates. In. <laughs> Shout out to the two teams. <laughs> ex- summertime. Blackout nice. dates, summertime. Yeah, bro, it, it, it accept, decline. Yeah, it is a blessing to be a part of such an incredibly diverse and huge team across the board. Yeah, City yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to get to lead sure. alongside some just genuinely dope people. Yeah, 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 yeah That dude. like love Jesus. Um, in my, you know, in, in the area that I get to serve, they love kids, they love students, and they want to see those, you know, young people discover and follow Jesus. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's a, like, that's one of the things that is like encouraging about the role that I have and makes the week nice. It's like yep. I have people that I know, you know, we can run with. For sure. Um, and For sure. Come in are, during the week, man. Yeah, like just, during the week on their own time yep. to clean the nursery yep. or to, you know, to, to put together crafts so, or to, yeah. to clean out rooms so that yeah, you know, yeah. our students can have more space. It's like, man, like this is this is beautiful. Well, I mean, it's the, it's, yeah, it's the beauty of the community of faith that when we recognize that when we serve together, we go much further together. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and I mean that collectively as a church, but also in our spiritual life, because yep. so this good. idea of serving, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, is all a part of our apprenticeship. It's an ongoing learning and growing that it goes beyond us yeah, and ourselves. Yeah, and we, we learn how to serve others and come alongside one another. Scripture is yeah. big on yep. the one another's, yep. you know what yep. I'm saying? Coming alongside one another. So What's, yep. this, what's the saying? It's like, if, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we're going to have to go without the... Uh, I'm still shook by this, dude. The Air Force One all time lows. All time. <laughs> right there, like, if any got, like Nike got new, rep is watching, got, got, and got if a you new just, thing. Yeah, if you're if, interested yeah. in a new. If anybody style, knows Nike discounts, like let us know so we can hook Josh up. You know what's you funny? Know what I got one. Fresh, yeah, for, <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> cue the, see, the, the Wait, angels move, move move music. <laughs> yeah, th- th- yeah. Th- th- this is a perfect example though. He said he got a hook up and he don't use he it. He just you chooses. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's yeah. Yo, what is it? Let's go. Let's let's continue. Is this what poor in spirit looks like? <laughs> <laughs> Preach a whole message out Preach of it. Preach a whole message. This yeah. is, this is, Speaking of messages, uh, yeah. past, this past Sunday, 
we kept going on in our uh, part three of our bread series, mm -hmm. right? And so I think what's been great about the bread series, and you guys probably have insight on that too, it's like uh, just hearing a lot of conversations and interacting with people mm -hmm. about how um, it's connecting with them in different ways and yeah. how um, as they begin to open up the scriptures and as they begin to um, read the scriptures um, with the insights that they're given, it's just... Uh, I think a lot of people are seeing it with fresh eyes mm -hmm. and a lot of people who are new to scripture um, feel like they have a starting point yeah. of like of how to engage in that. And so I thought we would talk a little bit more about that because like we said, we've been asking lots of questions throughout the first few weeks of the mm -hmm. series about, um, you know, what is the Bible? What is the Bible not? Um, can the Bible be trusted? Yeah. You know, um, what is the Bible actually for? Um, and then we, we finally are in this space of like, well, if we can get some sort of clarity and all that, like then how, how do we actually read it? How do mm -hmm. we start reading it? And so I think what would be great to focus on in our time together on the podcast is just kind of processing through how are we learning to read it? What are, what are some of the ways that we've learned to study it? Um, because people ask us questions a lot and, mm -hmm. you know, we'd love to talk to more people about it, but we don't always get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of offering insights on different Bible translations. I think that's a big conversation. Yeah. People are like, hey, I'm going to get a Bible, but I just don't know which one to get. Mm -hmm. There's all these different translations. Um, or maybe um, the difference between a, a regular Bible and a study Bible. Yeah. Um, or even things like um, Bible reading helps. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think to start us out, drawing us back to the scriptures again, because that's important. John 5. Um, Jesus, um, he says something really profound, um, as he does, right? He, he says, tends to do that. He, he tends to do yeah, that. Yeah, he drops some nuggets every now and again. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. He's Jesus, you know, but he says, you study the scriptures diligently, mm -hmm. which is that what we're, that's what we're encouraging people to do, right? We want to study the scriptures. Um, we want to engage the scriptures, read the scriptures. He says, but you study the scriptures because you think that in them you'll have eternal life, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but then he goes on and he says, these are the very scriptures that testify about me, mm -hmm. yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Yeah. And so Jesus is obviously calling our attention to there's a way of reading and studying the scriptures um, that in essence make it about us and what we want yep. and what we're hoping to get out of scripture yep. and what we want scripture to mean for our life, usually based on our own worldviews and presuppositions mm -hmm. and you name it, right? Yeah. Um, but Jesus says we, we can go about it in that way and miss the entire point yep. of the scriptures, which Jesus ultimately says, hey, it all points to me. Yeah. It, it all points to me. And so... Um, with the scriptures pointing to Jesus, I think the reminder that we want to linger in people's minds is that scripture was designed f for formation, not for information. Yeah. For formation. And when we think about formation, we say this all the time, you're always being formed by something or someone. Uh, and I think we need to be mindful of that. You know, um, we're formed by our inputs. Mm -hmm. You know, when I talk about inputs, it's the things that we watch, the things that we see, um, the things that we give our attention to. Yep. The spaces we place ourselves in. Absolutely. That, our environments, yeah. right? The, the different environments, um, the places we choose to go, the ch places we choose to frequent. Yeah, physical um, and digital these days. For sure, because yeah. everything's at our fingertips, yep. right? There's also um, the understanding of, uh, I, would, I would call it our community, mm -hmm. or um, maybe it's our friendships, the people that we're yeah. you know, allowing in our lives. Um, we you know, sometimes aren't always around the best people, you know, sometimes that's by choice. Yeah. Sometimes it's not by choice, you know, but that, that has an influence in our life. And then there's the habits, right? Mm -hmm. The habits that we keep, the things that we do mm -hmm. um, that are pretty repetitive, um, that um, kind of become a part of who we are, but that they're, they're shaping us and forming us. Yeah. And so what scripture does is it invades all that and begins to reshape, reform, mm -hmm. you know, better towards, you know, calling us towards the image of, of Jesus and which yeah. we're created also bringing out the best out of us that God says that we already are, right? And we begin to live into that mm -hmm. through the scriptures. And so um, don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that when you think about um, the idea of reading scriptures for the idea of formation yeah. versus just strictly information or to try to get something out of it. Yeah, I know back um, when I was in college uh, doing one of, my, one of my courses, I was reading through this document and the guy made a point that there's a, a canon of scripture, right? Yeah. Like what we have, like the Bible, where we where we say, hey, this is authoritative, this is the this is mm -hmm. inspired, this is it. Right. But he says, like, within the canon, there's a canon. Yeah. Which is, you know, and he said that, and that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, we look at we look at scripture and it's like this is the story, this has authority, this matters. He goes, but the reality is like scripture itself doesn't point to itself. Right. It points to Jesus. Yeah. Which the it's taking us somewhere. Yeah, the temptation, um, and I think for many years in my life and following Jesus and growing up in the church, 
uh, my answer to a lot of questions was because the Bible said. Yeah. It wasn't because that's who Jesus is. Right. And right. like, and I had to come to grips with that. And I wrestle with that even now. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of things I do and I say and I think, I'm like, oh yeah, the Bible says it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's almost instinctive. It's like I've, I've been conditioned and trained. And that's not that the Bible is wrong in any way. Right. But the Bible doesn't tell you to believe in itself. It tells you to believe in Jesus. Correct. Come it's on. the story Correct. within the story. That's good. That's good. Right. So like yeah. you, 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 you use any analogy you want. At the end of the day, this thing is not about itself. Mm -hmm. Though it has authority, and we talked about you know mediated authority through yeah. like though it has right. authority and it is trustworthy, it's trustworthy in as much as it's a trustworthy testimony about the person of Jesus, Correct. and then we're called to Him, right? So yeah. we trust Scripture because of who He is, right? And it was the the, the complicated part about that is the only thing I know about Jesus mm. is what's in Scripture, <laughs> right? Right? Right, you know? right? So, but I think too what you're talking about is it all pointing to Jesus in that way and being able to see that another term that is used oftentimes when um, people are talking about what we're reading in Scripture is this idea of foreshadowing. Yeah. Right. So a lot of the things that we see, they're a foreshadow mm -hmm. of what's to come. Mm -hmm. Right. There, it's kind of it's there, there's a setup to mm -hmm. where yeah. we're eventually going. Yep. Um, there's a um, there's a scene that's depicted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That gives us insight of what is pointing to yep. Jesus and what he what he will do yep. ultimately, right? And so I think that's always fascinating way mm -hmm. to kind of like engage in that with the mindset that like, hey, everything we're doing, it's all leading to Jesus. Everything yep. we're reading, it's all yeah. it's all leading mm -hmm. to Jesus, that's good. right? That's good. Which I think we've all been here, and, and Josh, you might you know have some insight on this too, uh, and kind of in your interactions with people, it's um when we talk about making Jesus the focus in, in the scriptures for formation versus information. That's important because if it's only for information, that's yeah. how we have um, people who know a lot about the Bible, but also still claim to be atheist or yeah. still claim to like, you know, uh, be in this deconstruction. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a thing yeah. right now yeah. that people are wrestling with. You know what I'm saying? It's also why you can have people that can quote a lot of scriptures, yeah, but yet at the same time still be yeah. rude, yeah. mean, hurtful, they lack prideful. the fruit of the spirit in right. their life. Like, I think I'm brings to mind that John 1 in, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And then John goes on to say that God, be Jesus became became the Word. The Word mm -hmm. became flesh. Yeah. And so, I mean, we can know a lot about Scripture and a lot about the Word, but unless that becomes and points us to the narrative that Jesus is, is really writing, embodying in us as we bear his spirit yeah. and he's given to us his righteousness. If we don't take hold of that, then nothing is really transformative. For at, sure. At the, I mean, well, I mean yeah, day. to that point, you, like you said, you, you can, we can know a lot about scripture, but have no relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. we completely miss yep. the yeah. Jesus. Scripture. And I love that, that, um, Jesus, the word became flesh, made his dwelling among made his, us. Yeah, it made his dwelling. Yeah. yeah, you know, and as he made his dwelling among us, right, um, ultimately invites us to relationship, invites yep. us to follow, Yep. right? And that's where that happens, right? You begin to follow, and because of the work of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right, not only are we learning from Jesus, but Jesus is doing a work in us where there's this fruit yep. that, that takes place, this fruit yep. of the yeah. Spirit, yeah. right? Um, and so, uh, I mean, I think that's great. Uh, the, the question then is like, okay, we're still trying to figure out why, why are we reading this, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, why are we reading the scripture? Um, we, we read the Bible, like we said, to get to know God, mm -hmm. um, his purpose for our life, mm -hmm. and to consciously cooperate with God and shaping us into mm -hmm. being more like Jesus, yeah. right? Um, so, so I think at the end of the day, what we want people to know is that the Bible um, is not just a system of beliefs no. mm -hmm. or, or morals mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying, good right. things to live by. Yeah. Um, it's actually a, a, a lifestyle. Yeah. When we engage scripture and we engage the Jesus of scripture, that we're ch that is that is one of the ways that we're choosing to follow him yeah. is through yeah. his his written word. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's good. And so where do we get started? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like that's that's the point that people keep asking. So okay, so I want to follow Jesus. Some people say a prayer. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They accept Jesus into their heart or some people uh, just, you know, they, they choose to walk away from a way they've been living life and right. choose to lean in and learn more mm -hmm. uh, about Jesus. But when it, when it comes to the Bible, it's like people get um, consistently stuck. Yeah. So um, I think we gave people a few ideas to start. We said, hey, approach the Bible based out of wanting relationship yeah. with Jesus. So. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to always read to, I got to understand everything right. or I got to apply everything immediately to my life, but we want to start with relationship. Then we said, we want to understand that we got to be consistent, 
right? Yeah. Let's talk about consistency a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, we're honest, we're transparent, we're vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what does consistency look, consistency look like in our life if we're for being honest about even us as pastors totally. engaging mm-hmm. scripture? Totally. Yeah. I know what we want yeah. to say right. and what we would like right. to happen yeah, yeah, in our yeah. life, but what's really going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, I love the word of God, but I neglect the word of God too. Sure. So it's like two, it's twofold. Like yeah. I love his word. I recognize that the source of, of, um, this ancient gospel truth that still to this day has yet to right. has lived without faint, uh, yet is still the same thing that I, mm-hmm kind of neglect and yeah. and choose other things whether that's you know i mean i guess time is 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 the currency sure. right yeah i mean you get busy you get caught up <laughs> we you get, know, we things get, going on yeah 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 but um i mean i think for me it's it's also been a matter of just kind of shifting my perspective and like in into friendship with god yeah. like and where we get out of this religious mindset and right. realizing that this is relationship and friendship with with holy spirit as we delve into his word it's it, it satisfies my every need if we talked about this i forgot what psalm it is but um talks about my soul my flesh faints for the living god yeah. so even the parts of me that thinks this is david's dialogue like even the parts of me that thinks it wants something else it actually wants jesus and mm-hmm. wants the sure. word sure, <laughs> you yeah. know so i've kind of had to to to, to crucify my own flesh and yeah. some of that and say you know what no, the thing I really do need is is the yeah. word. It's not a out it's of good. obligation in the sense of of where I'm being like reprimanded by God. Right. Now, yeah. granted, I've had moments of, of of some of that too, but it's more about like God. Mercy has triumphed over the judgment that was rightfully mine, mm-hmm. and the joy of that liberty has has set me free yeah. to live a life of wholeness in You. And I can yeah. step into Your Word and and know that it has everything yeah. that I need. Mm-hmm. You know, that's great. and that's by that's a statement lived out by faith <laughs> yeah in act in active faith not not a faith that is like oh i'm just strong arming my way through this thing it's like no lord like you say faith is a gift yeah. mm-hmm. so may this gift of faith be imputed into me so that i may receive whatever the benefit of your word is even if i can't fully consciously recognize what it is in this moment yeah. even if i my flesh tells me that it wants something else let me see the value of your mm, word right within right. within the pages of my story too yeah, great. so it's great yeah i think uh say so you think about consistency the ideal that i have in consistency would be a healthy rhythm as i engage scripture and so mm, what that looks yeah. like for me is like uh, sometimes I'm reading it uh, for for study, for the purpose of being able to to teach and equip and instruct. Sure. Right. Uh, there's other times where I'm reading it to simply be surprised by Scripture and mm. to enjoy time in the Word. Yeah. And there's other time I'm reading it to to wrestle with and to refine my own character. Yeah. You know, not that I'm like trying to impose statues upon myself, but I'm reading it to let the revelation of Jesus be held up as like okay i'm looking at who you are mm-hmm. and then god show me who i am sure and let it read me and then the parts that are inconsistent like we wrestle and sometimes yeah. there are things that i'm not really ready to let go of you know mm-hmm. or like at a point where i'm like oh i didn't even realize i was holding on to that and there's other times where i'm like yeah yeah like god like help me help me in this right you know so that's the ideal um you know to find a rhythm of it mm-hmm. uh you know throughout throughout any given week to spend uh the appropriate amount of time in each. It wouldn't be equal because I don't know that that's that's not rhythm. Sure, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. But um, for right now, like it, you know, it's it's learning that dance, and I think in every season in my life that dance gets different. Mm. Uh, the, the the music switches, mm-hmm. the tempo switches. So there are seasons where um, just the nature of things requires more more refinement and wrestling. Yeah. And there are seasons where it requires more study. Uh, like this season of my life requires more study. Uh, consistently than it has for other people's instruction than I did for a long time. Right. Um, just because of the nature of, of my role and different responsibilities and things that I have, it's not a bad thing. It's like learning to do that and not let that substitute uh, my time in the word to just enjoy the word. You know, so I'm enjoying the word as well, but it's yeah. like sometimes I'll say, hey, I don't have time to enjoy it. I need to study right. because I didn't manage my schedule properly or because you know, my kids get sick. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, and now things I'm up always at, happen. Up at three in the yeah. morning, cleaning up vomit off of a bed. You know? uh, right. Like, yeah, that's fun yeah. times. You fun know, times. so it's so it's life. like the ideal is a healthy rhythm. Yeah. And what I'm learning in this season of my life is 
to be okay with where I am if I'm honest about where I am. Mm. Sure. You know? Sure. I'm like, yeah. I am okay. I see that. That's the rhythm. Yeah. Not to beat myself up, but then mm. also not to give myself, like, not to excuse yeah. if I know I could have actually taken time. Like this morning, I was going through, <laughs> through, uh, through the reading plan, and it's like, oh, like, I'm going to rush through this, and I just feel this quickening in my spirit. Slow it down. Right. Take your right, time. Right. Push Don't pause. do it just to say you did the reading plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like actually yeah. spend time in the word. And it's like, oh, this is a little bit tricky. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me let me stop. That's let me good. slow down. Let me enjoy this. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And let let this speak to me. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Those are good thoughts. I think. Yeah. I think I, I'm kind of in a similar kind of dynamic as well. I think when I think of consistency with the word, I know for me, I've learned that like I need to really be intentional about scheduling it. Mm. <laughs> and it might sound weird because you're like, well, it's supposed to kind of go. It's like, no, like I if I'm going to read sometimes, like like I said, just for relationship, getting to know Jesus and spend, I have to schedule it mm-hmm. because rhythms are good. I, I'm yeah. I'm just like the type of person, right, that like I get up in the morning and I'm ready to roll. Totally. Mm-hmm. Like I got to go. I got this. I got that. I'm going to yeah. get kids to school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come back. I got my first meeting scheduled at this time. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get ready to go. You know, and it's like I've had to learn similar to how you said slowing down or creating rhythms yeah. is like I have to look at my morning and say, no, 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 what, what am I going to do yeah. first? Right, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Does that mean I gotta get up a little bit earlier? Yeah. Does that mean that I need to shift a few things in my schedule so that, that I don't go into my day? That's good, man. Right, or my first meeting without having spent time yeah. trying to hear from God, trying mm-hmm. to connect with Him, trying to have a relationship with Him. Yeah. Um, but then even at that, it's like, so I'll, I'll do those things, you know, and be intentional. But then we had this bread reading plan, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was laughing because, you know, I keep encouraging the church to like, be faithful in reading their bread reading plan. And then I realized that just in the course of this past week, just with everything going on, it's not that I didn't necessarily pause to read scripture. It's that I missed like three days in a row <laughs> oh. on the bread reading plan. And I was like, yeah. Man, I'm the one telling everybody to read the bread. <laughs> right, 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 and, then, right, right, and then I'm like, I, I, I got to get up and, and tell everybody. I hope you read it. You know what I mean? And then in my in my mind, it was it was like um, it was almost like this guilt yeah. and this kind of like, oh man. And so mm-hmm. I think what I've had to work through in, in learning how to engage scripture consistently as well is like is is to not feel guilty if yeah. I've committed to say like a mm. daily reading plan. So I know people that will download a daily reading plan on their app or they'll, right. um, I know plenty of people that said, I'm going to read through the Bible in a year. Yeah. And so you follow a journey mm-hmm. and then yeah. it's almost like you miss three days on that. Dude, you're like, and it's almost like I'm never going I'm back. I'm never going back. <laughs> I gotta, Dude, that I gotta was, read Leviticus. I gotta spend a month in Leviticus. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's like, it's like what, what do you do? What you bread am I really getting <laughs> yeah, here? Like, like, yeah, you done. know what I mean? My old, my old church, we used to go through the one year Bible reading plan like uh-huh. every day. Like it's like a, it looks like a Bible. Like you open yeah. it up and it's perfectly wrote out how you're gonna read. You get a little bit of Old Testament, a little bit of New Testament, Psalm and Proverbs. Yep. And boy, you missed three or four days on that. Yeah, the catch up is crazy. Catch up. Crazy. Yeah, you'll be reading for like a whole day. <laughs> You're just trying to catch up, right? I mean, obviously the bread reading plan is not like that, but no. again, right, I right. think it was just that battling with like the um, the the guilt of like, man, Definitely. you know what I mean? And I and That's I shouldn't so real, feel man. guilty. I, instead, I want to flip that and say, now that I'm aware that I didn't spend that time with that reading plan, instead of feeling guilt. I, I want I want that feeling to instead drive me back to want to reengage. Right. Yeah, so instead good. of saying I'm gonna play catch up, I'm gonna show up. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna show up again. I, and what I'm gonna do is like we've been saying, I'm yeah. just gonna keep reading. Yep. Yeah. I'm not gonna so much worry about well, I have to go back and catch up. Yeah. yeah, yeah I wanna yeah, yeah. I wanna pick up on the day that I I'm on now. Show up. Definitely. And yeah. I wanna show up and be with God and yeah. continue yep. that time. Because and catch so. up, you just you're rushing through it. You're just yeah. trying to do it to do it like Correct. a legalistic checklist, and you're not actually spending time in it. Say, hey, you know what, God. Sorry, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, I'm gonna start here. Yeah, and that's the thing. Forward. God's not holding us yeah. accountable. Yeah. God's for like, that. don't like, talk to me until you read the first three chapters. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like God's not that way. You know. So so God has freed us and released us from having to do that. We need to free ourselves from that and good. give ourselves mm-hmm. permission to say, Hey, I'm just gonna pick up yeah. where I left off and continue to engage with God. Yeah. yeah because yeah. Um, God's not trying to to reprimand me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like God Jesus always wants leads to with be invitation. with me. Yeah. yeah it's all exactly. it's all about. He throughout Jesus's ministry. Yeah. He invites people to come and follow him. And if Jesus himself, if he, you know, if he's the Word, became fl- like this invitation yet mm-hmm. again is like what am, what is the Lord inviting us yeah. into? Mm-hmm. What type of 
what type of rhythm of grace you know mm-hmm. like we're talking about bible translations we don't have to get into that quite yet but like yeah. uh, eugene peterson what is a message translation in i think it's matthew 24 about the talking about the unforced rhythms of okay, grace like, like, like yeah. what what yeah. rhythm of grace is is am i not living into yeah. like i used to talk i used to like it's not yeah. a dance or, or it's, it's not a, it's not a waltz uh-huh. it's not a tango but it's something else right. you know what i'm saying right. it's a dance that, you get like, to work that out with god absolutely right. i think that type of stuff you know they talk about singing the song that god's given you to our church all the time and how that song is discovered within the fabric of our pain uh, the intricacy of our our mountain high and our valley low and and in all of that god invites us to bring it to him and mm-hmm. say god show me where is my place in yeah. in this like yeah. where is your place in this what type of rhythm are you inviting me into if i step back i love that idea of just being present yeah. just being shown because god you are always here for me and mercy's triumphed mm-hmm. over judgment yep, that's so right. i don't have to there's no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus so like let me not belittle myself and self-deprecate and and I used to feel that way when it came to like again missing days in my reading plan or even like people that would get up really early in the morning and they would read scripture like I used to hear about these prayer word ladies in my church who were you know crazy prophetic but we'll get up at 3 30 in the morning and start yeah, praying nah, and i'm yeah. like, I just assume go to bed at 3 30 and wake up at 3:30. right hey, right my thing is, i'm yeah, not sure god like, wants to hear me at 3 30. Yeah. i think god wants me to sleep at 3 30 because you know, it's not going to be very much of a conversation that's facts. you know what, you know what like, i mean like but i used to i used to hurt myself in those ways yeah, emotionally sure, sure. Yeah. where i would like just kind of crunch everything and think like god yeah like, why am i not as spiritual as this sure and but why, i think that's a good point that you bring up is like so we need to to build so we're building a relationship with God mm-hmm. and we're learning that how we're hardwired and how God's uniquely made us. Right. right? right we right. can still engage in a life giving relationship with him mm-hmm. through uh, different ways. So yep. there are people, right? Like uh, I know like Linda, Linda is, is the first one <laughs> up in our house. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know that about her. She's yeah. uh, early riser. And immediately she goes out to the living room. She opens up every window in the house, right? Like she wants it bright, all (laughs) this natural light in, you know, letting it in. And then she'll go and she'll sit down, corner pocket on the couch, spending time with Jesus, Mm -hmm. right? I'll get up an hour or so after her because I want her to have that time. I walk out. I see she's still engaged with God. I I say hello. I say good morning. And then I leave the room Mm -hmm. and I I, I move on to go kind of spend my time with Mm -hmm. God, you know, and I, I never kick myself and say, how come I don't get up as early as oh, Linda? Wow. Yeah, correct. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Which is what we could do. We could totally. look at somebody totally. and we can see their relationship with God and the way that they're going about that relationship with God and often want to feel bad about ourselves yeah, yeah, when yeah. it's like, no, I feel like totally. I'm growing in my relationship with God. Yep. It's just she Definitely. chooses it to do it at 6 a.m. Totally. Yep. I choose more closer to 7.30 a.m. Yeah, yeah, totally. And what God is asking like, for us to be is faithful. Definitely. Right, and there are some people that um, maybe you get the most out of engaging with scripture, praying to God later in the evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the point is make be intentional about that. Like yeah. carve out the time totally. for that consistency. The only right? time we have to assess is when nothing's happening at all. Yeah. Right. I mean, that would be, yeah, that's yeah, the only exactly. time. That's really the only time we need to. Or when you're going through the motions or when you're always guilty totally. about it. It's exactly. like, hey, wait, something's not right here. Totally. Yeah. Those uh, are yeah. the only times that we yeah, assess. Yeah, if we're not engaging stuff, at all, obviously, red flag. You know, yeah. Yeah. We got, we, yeah. that, that, that's the whole point of bread, right? Like, hey, let's get back into yeah. yep. regularly engaging with scripture, learning from God, allowing him to teach us, allowing the scriptures to, yeah. to read us, us learning more about Jesus, developing this beautiful relationship with him, yeah. mm-hmm. and then begin to live into yeah. Yeah. what he's invited us La- to. Last thing you know? on that, I yeah, mean, yeah. I know for me, like I just have struggled with, you know, and a lot of people know my story surrounding mental health and depression and anxiety and sure. sadness. And, and I think just speaking to those that have just been crippled by the weight of what anxiety does, like I... I I know that feeling of like, man, I just can't even get out of my, my bed. Sure. I just feel crippled by the weight of, yeah. of mm-hmm. stress and sadness in my life. And, and God shows not just mercy in that space, but mm-hmm. he shows an understanding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think his invitation is, would you just be kind to yourself in this space and sleep a little longer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you for know sure. what I mean? Would you, would you be kind to yourself and realize that like, 
no, I, I understand the intricacy of this pain you're experiencing and how this is making you feel. I think that's the voice of the Lord yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is him saying, you know, I, I get this, mm -hmm. like this way that you feel like you can't For get sure. up right now. I understand you, but you're my beloved in whom I'm well pleased. And I'm and, with you. And I'm with well, you right there yeah. in that space. <laughs> and, I, and I also think something to add to that, since, you know, kind of bring that up. Um, obviously, anxiety, people deal with it in different ways, different capacities. I know in the times that I deal with anxiety, um, I, I feel like for some, I've heard like, oh, when they're anxious, they immediately want to go to scripture. And they yeah. want to read. Sometimes I feel like the way my anxiety works is that like, I can't think about reading right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like reading is the last thing Agreed. that I can do. And that's Agreed. not, that's Bible or other, you Agreed. know what I'm saying? Like it just right now, I can't focus on what I'm reading. Agreed. However, I can also take alternative approaches yeah. to engaging the scripture yeah. that I can allow scripture to be read to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning so like if, if we do happen to have a Bible app on our phone mm -hmm. that you can push play and even in your anxiety and even in this place of you are seeking God for um, some sort of regulation that the scripture being read to you, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think does change the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It does give you a sense of focus and a peace. Yeah. Like uh, you might not be able to focus on reading the words yourself, but words being spoken over to you. Or, even, you or even sung by the, over you. Yeah, sung mm -hmm. over you. You know, it's like there, there's, there's powerful ways to engage yeah. that yeah. way. I think the point is yeah. consistency and engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for the majority of human history, the Bible was read to the people. Yeah, so most, people within yeah. community. most people did not know how was, to read or have was, access to it. Yeah, it no like, Bible apps. I think it was like, what's it, 10% yeah, like nah. of people could even, could even write, write yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, it was a higher percentage within the Hebrew people because I think it was a part of the culture to learn the, the language and the letter for yeah. sure, so that more people could access and read scripture. Jeez, but the yeah. majority of people, uh, life was life in to the point where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't That's even know how to crazy, read, I got a word. Bro. It's wild. Yeah. So, so like, illiteracy was a serious problem. Yeah, yeah. totally, right? totally. And so people that could read would read over. That's others, crazy because right? David be like, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin mm -hmm. against you. Mm -hmm. Like what more space would you have to not just hear the word that is being spoken? And I have nowhere else to keep this mm -hmm. other yeah. than right here. Yeah, I can't just open up home. to uh, Psalms chapter 80. Nope. Not, right. You know I mean? It's like, right. You, you have to. So that's what's so fascinating too about um, the Jewish culture that we, we talk about when we read scripture. It's like when they, they knew the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would work hard from, from a young age yep. in the school system uh, committing scriptures to memory, mm -hmm. they, they would wear them on their yep, on their, on their wrists, person, on, yeah. on their homes, on, the, on their heads. But yeah, put it over the doorposts yep. of their home as as reminders. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's well, like it's just yeah. it, it's a consistency. Yeah, right. Like, it's a it's, it's, it's choosing to engage. What I love yeah. is on the doorposts in their homes was the Shema. Is is this invitation? Hear, mm -hmm. O Israel, the Lord our Lord, God is one. one. It's here. Yep. That means God wants to speak. Yep. So the scripture <laughs> tells you, like, if there's anything that you can question about scriptures, God want to talk to you. Yes, He does. Yes, yeah, he does. yeah, yeah. His invitation to you. Come yeah. and follow and yeah. to hear him. That's, so well, that's what I love too about when you're, um, you know, some people get caught up in the instructions of like Leviticus or mm -hmm. different places in the Bible where God was instructing people to not participate in certain other rituals mm -hmm. that were consistent in communities that were around them. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because it wasn't just like, oh, here's God's people just living all by themselves. Nope. It's like, nope. no, there's they, other they communities. They lived in a world and in uh, a time. Yeah, in a world and a time yeah. of all kinds of pagan gods yep. and all kinds of things. And there's all kinds of rituals that people would. Um, engage in to get those God's attention. Mm. Yep, to get and I love, yeah. I love what God does. God says, hey, you don't need to do all that because yeah, yeah, yeah. you already have my attention. Yep. You don't yeah. need to stir up my attention or get my attention or yeah. try to, you know, wake me up or so like, get me to move. I, I'm already with, I'm the God who is with. That's so good. And, who, <laughs> that's, and who's gone before you. Like, I, yeah, who's gone before. And I dwell. Yep. Right? Like that, that was the point of even in the Old Testament, you know, the temple, you know, yep. that God wanted to dwell. You know, his presence, you know, yeah, that, yeah, you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't have to go wake up God or try to get that. God's, you know, nope. attention by doing some random, you know, yeah. chaotic <laughs> ritual. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, yeah. no, God, God's like, no, I, I want relationship with you. Yeah. So, you know, yep. so that's and, what I, we're and it's still for us today. Jesus, he wants relationship with us. Yep. And we get that through consistency of engagement as we continue to read his words. Mm. That, that's all mm. we're saying. It's never been about performance, perfection, yeah, or striving yeah. for acceptance. Love that too. It's only by, it's only by the blood, dude. Mm -hmm. yep. That's good. That's I love good. that. I love it. All right. So in our last few moments together, like, I mean, I know we're running out of time, but you know, technically it's our podcast. So we can go as long as we want. Yeah, you know you what can mean? turn it off whenever you want to. Don't turn it off. Yeah, don't turn it off. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, Bible translations, I know people ask a lot about Bible translations. Mm. If we are going to read consistently, what mm. Bible translations? Some people 
um, depending on their upbringing, were handed a King James version. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Troy's favorite. That's a nostalgic thing. I don't read the King James I regularly. Understand. It's but we love to give you a hard time thing. for it. Just like we yeah, give yeah, Josh yeah. a hard time with his shoes, and we I give s- you a hard time with your I sometimes speak in King James. I you am do. aware of this. You do, yeah. Yeah, old English yeah. for the win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all the time. I will say when you're exhorting, it sounds amazing. Though. <laughs> yeah, when you're, when you're when praying and you go full old English dope. in your prayer, I'm just like. I'm just like. It kind of yes. yeah, it kind of felt a little bit more powerful. I don't know what that is. I don't know if you intended to do that <laughs> straight up, or if that just naturally came out of you. But I was like, as the spirit gives utterance, as the spirit gives utterance, so, he sure and giveth. obviously the spirit gives. <laughs> he sure giveth, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I won. Sure, I won. He said he giveth. <laughs> he giveth. Surely, hey, but surely yeah. he doth. Yeah. He said, as the spirit gives utterance, and it is always in King James, apparently. <laughs> Give utterance. Is that it's a word? Never utterance? in any other. You know utterance. what I mean? It's like utterance. Uh, utterance. This yeah. is not a slight to anybody who reads the no, King no, James. No, no, no. King by James by is way. fine. We just, uh, we just plan. King James, I think it's uh, for those that are new to the Bible, it's not the great starting place. Yeah. yeah you know, totally, it's not a good starting totally, point. Totally. I think, um, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of. Um, scholarly advances over time yes um from you know the quote-unquote original king james that everybody kind of gets real hype about you know what i mean um and so that that's good news that we have scholarly advances that um there has been more discovered uh, Mm -hmm. and understood Mm -hmm. um through both the hebrew and the greek and so um i think some really great translations that um we kind of focus in on here i know one that we use predominantly here at city line church is uh the niv yeah which is also the the new international version. version. Uh, they have um, a few revisions, but the the latest revision is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, the latest revision is great, and and basically what what's great about the NIV is it it figures out the best way um, in English uh, to transfer the meaning. Yes, right. So you go from a member. We said the scriptures are written um, for us, but they weren't written to us. Mm-hmm. They weren't written in our language. No, they're written in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. Yep, and so the NIV takes the best way in English to transfer those meanings to us. And uh, yeah, they're good translations for like regular reading, re- regular yeah. Bible study, ongoing Bible study. Definitely. To me, I find them to be a good translation for teaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? On yeah. the weekend. Yeah. Um, it's uh, um, whether you're um, a lot farther <laughs> along in your faith and been in mm-hmm. church all your life or you're brand new to scripture. Yeah. Um, the NIV is a, just a really great balance yeah. of. It, it's also written at a really good reading level. Yeah. yeah. Like a really good, great reading level. You know, we got people all over the map with that. Yeah. Uh, whether English is their second language. Right. Um, yeah. Right. So it's really helpful to have a translation that's accessible to the to the everyday person mm-hmm. that can be understood and like, you know, by and large understood. Um, yeah. There are a few things with any translation that you're going to you know, have to scratch your head, maybe sure. refer totally. to another one. Totally. But the NIV is really good and kind of trying to bridge the gap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a ton of, of translations. Yeah. Just to kind of give everybody like a quick, like, um, I guess, overview. So you have King James way over here, mm-hmm. Old English, you know what I'm saying? Nobody mm-hmm. talks like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you kind of have over swinging towards the middle, you have kind of the NIV mm-hmm. that we're talking about kind of sits in the middle. And then the furthest from that, Josh already brought it up. He says the message. Right, yeah, which yeah. Troy, <laughs> every time we talk about the message version, Eugene Peterson, he did a great job translating that and, and making it in common everyday language. <laughs> he paraphrased. But, but we have to understand that yes. it is a paraphrase. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it's not a word for word translation. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, you know, like he's breaking down the Greek. He's taking potentially like an NIV, you know, mm-hmm. Bible, and he's paraphrasing that yeah. um, and giving us some some <coughs> syntax and some understanding. Yeah. Another one is the passion. It's and communicative, the passion right? That's he's using. communicating yeah. it in a everyday, more palatable way. Right. Damn. For people who've been conditioned, and again, I Correct. say that I've been conditioned right. that the King James Version, Old English, is the holy scripture. Like I was told as a kid, like yeah. no, no cap, I was told as a child that other translations of the Bible that were not King James were translations that the devil strategically placed in Bible bookstores. Yeah, wow. dude, dude, to I, mislead you from wow. the truth of God. Like I was told that as like a five year old. Yeah. I, and I'm like, we're we're on guard against all this. That's deception. crazy. Like, I, I told <laughs> which is not true. No, it's yeah. not true. Not true it's not. At it's, all. It's, a, it's, it's there's a word for it. It's called fundamentalism or manipulation <laughs> or manipulation or, just <laughs> yeah. or both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, remember, I told you guys this last week, but I my <laughs> my old hometown. There's this Christian bookstore, and literally wrote like right on the window is like we sell all versions of the Bible. What we believe that most people have been saved by the King James version of the Bible. So we encourage you to wow. buy only those copies yeah. inside of the store. 
No, and well, I'm yeah. just there's like, that. there's that. And, and wow, it's yeah, like it's we're like, just we're we're yeah. just. <laughs> we're, yeah. I'm not even inside the story yet. Yeah. <laughs> but like, there's also like the easy to read Bible. So like, I remember yeah, we were doing yeah. a series on the Psalms uh, in youth, and we're talking through the Psalms, and I'm reading it, and I'm like these these like middle school and high school students are looking at me like deer in the headlight. They're like, what in the world <laughs> is David going on about? And so I was connecting <laughs> with the leaders, and one yeah. of them was like, hey, maybe we should just use a different translation, right? And everything in me was like. They get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've already, I've already. Scholarly re- Troy over here is like, no. <laughs> totally. Academia has words, spelled us w- if we go to a paraphrase. Smith, lyricist, you know, like. <laughs> spoken word yeah. poet. So I was like, all right. And, and then they put um, on the reading plan on, on the City Line Youth social media uh, for we were going through one of the Psalms and they put it in the easy to read version. And I started reading it and I was like, I like that. Makes a lot of sense. It cool. makes a lot of sense. It's a That's lot dope. easier to die down. Now, because of the amount of time and different translations I've I've had the, the privilege and benefit of being able to sit in, yeah, like I can I can I can thug through a new revised standard version. I can thug through sure. ESV. You know, the, the King James or the ESV yeah. and I'm and I'm you know I'm capable and then you know I still gotta do the work and looking at different translations and but I'm like I can I can navigate this and wrestle with it. But sure. I'm like if you're talking people like you're trying to help them. You're trying to remove the barriers, right? right. You're trying to remove right. the boundaries. I think we we owe it to ourselves to be aware of the different translations that are out there. Sure. Also, I wrestle with this fact that Jesus taught primarily, according Parables. to scholarship, from a paraphrased version of scripture mm-hmm. called the Aramaic Targum. When mm-hmm. when I when I learned True. that, I got kind of irritated. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because it flew in the face again of my cultural construct. Sure, sure. And I'm like, oh, Jesus is is challenging. Yeah, when, my he was, arrogance, when he was teaching totally. from the scriptures, there was he that. was teaching from. But when he was communicating yeah. to people, He's, right. he was doing it in parables. Yes, and so he was like, telling them a story to so get to good. the heart of a point. So I'm like, you okay, mm-hmm. so, well, yeah. Jesus made it palatable for the everyday person. Who do who do I think I am? Right. Like honestly, right. what am I trying to prove right. by, by by speaking sure. in some lofty? Yeah, and it's only lofty because somebody wow. said it. It's and like I'm like, so yeah. that's a that's a challenge where again. When you let the Bible read you and yep. let it get into your mess, and I'm yep. like, okay, God, like I got to set aside my pride yep. in in this and say no, like I like as much as it you know makes me like kind of cringe sometimes. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but I'm like, but is there anything wrong with it? No. Yeah. Like if I don't like it, don't read it. Sure. Like, <laughs> well, I think what's good about the translations to kind of point out to people is like, hey, if you're looking for a good Bible translation, we would say a translation like the NIV. Mm-hmm. The, what's great about that? It's both good for reading mm-hmm. and for studying. Yes. Right. We don't see anything wrong with the message paraphrase. No. It's a helpful paraphrase. We just need to be mindful. It's a paraphrase. Right. And it's great for reading. Yes. But probably not for study. Correct. Right. And so when we're picking, you know, what translations, Mm -hmm. you know, I think we have to keep kind of some of those key factors in mind. Like I said, lots we could say about translations. I'm sure we'll probably get questions on on that and stuff like that, which Mm -hmm. is fine. And we could talk more. Um, But we also talk about not just the translation that you are reading Mm -hmm. what we talk about um there are bibles and then there are study bibles yeah right and i think just to kind of throw a shout out to study bibles is study bibles are really important um to know what they are and to probably invest in one Mm -hmm. um very worthwhile um they they come with lots of great information uh study bibles give you uh more insight on context yeah Yeah. yeah. um or when you hear a certain character like we say a guy like Peter or Nehemiah or Moses or what um, often in a study Bible, you'll have a, a whole section dedicated yep. to this person almost yeah. gives you got, gives you like a, a life history, background, yeah, totally. like a quick biography, so yep. to speak of like what they're known for, what they did, yeah. mm-hmm. um, who they were leading, who they were talking to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think what that does is um, again, it serves to not only help us study the scripture, but full of, pull us further into the story. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Because now uh, we read a, a guy like Peter, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I've talked to so many people that is like, you know, some of Peter's tendencies as, as I've kind of read them, I, I find some of those same tendencies. Like, I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, cause we're human. Like mm-hmm. we're like the brokenness of humanity, yep. you know, exists yeah. in us all. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think those study Bibles. So there's like a, a study Bible that comes in all the different translations. Definitely. Yep. Right. Um, there's one that I particularly have been enjoying lately. It's the the life application, life application study yeah. study Bible. Um, also, I get that in NIV as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just great for extra dialogue, extra information. Mm-hmm. As I'm sitting with the scriptures, um, I might be reading a passage of scripture, just scripture as is. Um, but there's something in me that hmm, 
this raises the question or, yeah. huh, I, I wonder why Paul was saying this to these people. Yeah. And then it drives me back to my study Bible mm -hmm. to be able to kind of get a bit more insight and context yep. based on um, that same passage of scripture and the extra notation yep. that comes with that. And yep. so all those things are great. Agreed. Um, so lastly, I think as we're kind of processing through and helping people over, over the, the last few moments is um, what are some Bible reading helps? So we got translations, we got <laughs> Bible studies, some, Bi some Bible reading helps, right? Um, those Bible reading helps would be things like, um, is there a podcast that you listen to or yeah. an app that you have or a, you know, like what, what would you say has been helpful for you as you're studying the Bible? One of my, and, and I, I don't preach as much as you guys. I'm sure. doing a lot of lead, like lead worship most of the time. Um, but even just for my own personal study, uh, and it, it's great for if you were doing a talk, but even great just for understanding more of what words really mean. I know for me, as I've you know tried to develop more of a strong worship ethos and philosophy, as we've carried and sustained what we felt like God was doing in this community, as I pulled scriptures that I felt were foundational to our team, it felt like I needed to do my due diligence and walk out a process, and especially when I was in Bible school, walked through this as, as well. One of my favorite tools is Blue Letter Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, Blue Letter, Bible, Blue Letter Bible is so, it's also just fun to use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could put in any scripture, any verse, and basically word by word, not like words like the, it's not really gonna use anything, for, you know, <laughs> weird, or, or a, or something like All that, right. you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean, but like those can matter. But yeah, yeah. They, they can, they John, can matter. John one, it matters that, a lot. Yeah. But but I guess if you were looking up a word like like worship, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's fun to go through the word worship. First time it's ever used is in the book of Genesis. You learn that it's yep. from the word shaka, you know, yeah. and then you start to learn the it, it basically it'll it'll break it down line by line, each word by word. You click that word, it opens up, gives you the pronunciation of it, um, and then gives you cross references to where it's found else mm -hmm. throughout yeah, scripture, and then as well as different definitions that you could find yeah. for it, and then as well as a full on just kind of like thesis yeah, on just that word, which is like wild that you mm -hmm. know people are at that level where they can do way way more academics than Bro. i can dude yeah. crazy yeah. like the you know talk about commentaries man yeah. i mean just the stuff yeah. people can pull revelation yeah, out of one allows scripture people to go really deep if they want to yeah. it allows them to get some information if they mm -hmm. want to you know it's like it's, it's yeah. fun you can learn yeah. fun words out of it too yeah. just stuff about scripture that it kind of you know you take one passage that's meant a lot to you or it's ministered to you and then you can actually have fresh perspective and insight on it yeah. just yeah, by the good. fact that I, I see it through a new lens and yeah. I see it through a new angle. Cool. So yeah. that's been one tool that's been really that's helpful for me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Speaking of smart people who do a lot of work, uh, Bible Project, um, their podcast dude, and the Bible website Project. for like context on different books and Shout themes out to their scripture. animations, dude. Yeah. They're crazy. They they're crazy. Just, they Tim Mackey and the crew. Yeah, yeah. they're they crazy. They do good work. It's, it's really dope. Um, so Bible Project is one. I'm like, hey, like to give you a good overview insight before you approach a book or as you're reading a book, processing. Like, yeah, hey, let me hear some, some scholarship yeah. on this. And and, and you, you take what, what these people have learned and what they're teaching and you wrestle with it as you reapproach scripture yourself. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, then, you know, uh, there's, uh, I love BibleHub.com because it, it, like, Bible you, can, Hub. Yeah. you can pull up the interlinear. So yeah. like the Hebrew, and you can yeah, go through some word too. study and stuff. Um, so there, there's a number of things. Uh, different concordance. I remember as a kid, I was given a strong concordance of the Bible, right? <laughs> which is like, I mean, that's than the like, Bible. that's like advanced, advanced, advanced. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you're new to the Bible, I, I would not do recommend go buy, <laughs> don't buy a concordance. And, and honestly, I would say don't yeah. even start with a commentary. No. Like yeah, a, 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 allow yourself the opportunity to engage scripture for yourself yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and trust that God wants to teach yeah. you. I think Bible Project, you know? each book, they do like an overview. Yeah, all the absolutely. Books to give you the, like, it's like what, what you find in a study Bible. It's like, hey, yeah. this is some cultural context. This is some historical context. This yep. is what's going on. This is who's who in, in the story. Yeah. And then yep. take that with you on your journey. Correct. So it's, it's an eight to 12 minute kind of like, uh, here's an intro. Yeah about what you're about to go read. And they got like a cool yeah. cartoon. So. Oh, it's super good. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah, it's like great. Saturday morning, but we yeah. I'm telling you, man, yeah. the animations go crazy. Yeah. 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 Animations yeah. are great. And like I said, uh, Tim Mackey, I appreciate his work. And, yeah. and John um, Collins. His, Shout out yeah. to Tim Mackey and John Collins. Yeah, yeah I'd, man, I'd guys. be comfortable like on any, like if I was ever given a talk, like if I was like, no, these guys do a way better job than yeah. me <laughs> explaining this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We'll put it on the big LED wall, put it right there. You know what I mean? That's how comfortable I am. Oh, for sure. Always, you know. Lots of good resources out there, but good places to start that you don't get too thick in the water. So totally. yeah. I think like uh, a good study Bible, 
and uh, you know, like Bible Project podcast. Yeah. Um, and I'd say like uh, for uh, there's the the U version app, U version Bible app. Right? app. Um, so if anybody hasn't downloaded the U version Bible app, all the Bible um, plans. That there's got one in there that sick. Linda turned me on to uh, that you can download from U version. Um, it's called the Bible Recap. Mm. Um, so the Bible That's Recap. Cool. It just kind of um, again, it's taking you through. Um, every book of the Bible and every chapter and doing something similar um, that, um, but way different than Bible project. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, the Bible recap is um, someone kind of giving you the backstory, helping you to understand Mm -hmm. you're, you're actually reading it. And then you're also having some help unpack what you just read, which is helpful. And so it's it's super good. There's videos attached to it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they're not long videos, Mm -hmm. uh, especially as you're getting some uh, through some of the, um, the thickness of the Old Testament sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's always good to have some commentary to try yeah. to help. Um, and so um, they put a lot of work into that to kind of help with that. Um, I, I believe um, the woman's name is Tara Beth Cobble, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get nice. names wrong, but but shout out. You shout know what out. I mean? Thanks, Tara Beth. You know what I mean? It's, good, it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, so there's lots of helps out also, there. Also, love that it's a woman. Just got to say that. You like, know what I'm saying? Dope. Hey, that's sick. Their their contributions are valuable in the kingdom. You know, uh, and so like I said we're we're a church that values uh, women's roles in ministry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and we're we're like I said we're grateful to champion that. You yep. know what I'm saying? As yep. we're all taking next steps towards um, what God is doing, not only in City Line Church, but um, just the work of the kingdom of God. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. so it's still so cool. Um, so yeah. Um, so I think lastly, just leaving people with, um, um, keep reading, keep reading. Yeah. Trust that God uh, wants to teach you. Mm-hmm. Trust that the Holy Spirit um, wants to do something in you. Uh, don't just leave all the scripture reading to um, your favorite pastors or your uh, favorite podcaster or your favorite YouTube videos. Um, allow yourself to engage scriptures. I'd also say, don't go to your smartest Bible knowledge friends and have them decipher everything for you. Again. Yeah engage scripture for Agreed. yourself trust Agreed. god um, in that knowing that god wants to work yeah. in your heart yeah. and and ultimately knowing that you know what at, at the end of the day um this is something that's supposed to be lived out like yeah. we're, we're actively like uh, we, we we said it uh, i think it was uh last Sunday we said we're a part of this story yep we're invited into yep. a part of this story and not only are we a part of the story, but God's inviting us to carry the story forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? it was beautiful as uh, scripture tells us that we've been given the mind of Christ and it, it, we also been given the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Yeah. So the same Holy Spirit that works in Charles Spurgeon or uh, yeah. Philip Yancey yeah. or uh, so whatever who your favorite better. person is, same yeah. Holy Spirit you have access to. Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. And like he's, he gives us understanding and he teaches us all things that, that G, concerning yeah. Jesus. So when you sit down and approach scripture, God's not trying to make it hard. That's God's good. not trying to make it right. confusing. He's not trying to like hide himself and cloud himself no. in secrecy and codes and mathematical no, equations. No, not at all. And he's, he's not like, playing peekaboo or nah. hide and seek. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he wants to be known. It's fresh revelation. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. wants to make himself known to you. Yeah. And invite you in a relationship That's with good. him That's through so the word. Good. And I think, and yeah. And so we're engaging scripture um, with the purpose of revelation. Mm-hmm. Right, what, what is God saying, mm-hmm. you know? Um, interpretation, mm-hmm. uh, and then we wanna to get to application. Yep. Because it all points right? to Jesus. Because it all points to That's Jesus, so good, man. and we're followers of Jesus. And so I'll, I'll leave everybody with this quote that I found that I just thought was great. It's from a uh, uh, New Testament scholar, Scott McKnight. My um, boy. No <laughs> relationship to Brian McKnight. I was just um, a literally about to say. It's like a thing come true though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One, it's like a dream come <laughs> true. No? Uh, I mean. All right, well. Uh, yeah. We can. Okay. We, we could sing, but we don't, want, we don't want to lose it. Yeah, Troy can't. <laughs> That's I just true. want to acknowledge that. They will turn that song <laughs> out after this. Yeah, yeah. We'll, I'll we'll, we'll, do it. Yeah, we'll sing when well. the podcast is over, yeah. but I want to leave him with this quote. <laughs> so uh, Scott McKnight says that we aren't called to live first century lives in the 21st century but we are tw- we're, we're to live our 21st century lives as we walk in light of the revelation that God gave us in the first century. Mm. Hmm. It says the gospel is capable and designed to strike home in every culture, in every age, in every language. We need 21st century Jesus followers living out the biblical gospel in 21st century ways. Wow. That's like trident, chew on that. I'm telling you, just chew That's on good. that. Just let, let, it, let it sit with you mm-hmm. for a moment. And as you do, just uh, want to say thank you for tuning in once again. Just a quick heads up. 
uh, more great things to talk about yeah. next week um, as we drop episode three that's coming up. We encourage you to join into that podcast. We'll have some new guests on the podcast that week, and so we're excited about that. Big bet. Won't talk too much about that, but uh, we're just bet. excited that it's all happening, and we just want you to know we love you. We thank God for you. Um, continue to engage the scriptures together, and we cannot wait to be with you again soon. See you soon. Have a great week. Peace out. One, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> Two, just want to be with you. Three, because it's plain to see that you're the only one for me. And four, repeat steps one through three. Five, make you fall in love with me. Ever. I was going for the harm. Oh, <laughs> no. We tried. We tried. It's okay. No, bro. Hey, you know what? We're going to work on this and we'll we'll hit it again next week. No. Okay. Yeah, we'll work I on it. I might have to include this as the outro to this week. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Make sure you auto tune your boy. <laughs> uh, T-Pain, look out.